Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making bench hooks and these are a great simple tool for making your joinery and things like that, whether you wanna cut a tenon, or you wanna do some pairing or just slicing a board to length. A bench hook makes it very easy to do at the bench and these are made out of a single piece walnut and we're gonna be looking at exactly how we take them apart, how we make these out of a single piece without any joinery. It's a good project to learn skills, chisel work, saw work, and experiment and play around with it. So let's dive in and take a look at a little bit more detail into ex how exactly we make these happen. The block that I'm working with is walnut, and I love working with walnut. It's a very smooth, easy hand tool wood. It's about two inches thick by about six inches wide. Um, anything about an inch and a half or wider will work well for these, although I wouldn't go much thinner than an inch and a quarter. So first thing I want to do is cut this to length, and it is about that long. <laughs> I think it's about 14 inches long. I'm not really caring. I just drew a line and cut it there. Then I want to plane one surface, and this will become my reference surface that I can make all my marks off of. Once I know that it is true and flat and twist-free, then I can start laying out all of the marks for making the hook. Basically, all I want to do is make two big check marks opposite of each other on either side of the board. So to do that, I'm going to mark in about an inch and a half, and then draw a line from corner to mark, which I'm going to be doing with a square. And here you can see how I'm marking it out with the square. This will make the notch that the board will sit in exactly 90 degrees from the back to the base of what will be the hook. So it kind of makes a bit of an angle here. If you put it into the vise so that it is not at an angle and the cut is now vertical, it makes it a little easier. Next, I want to cut out a bunch of relief cuts. And these are slits about an inch to inch and a half apart all the way down the board. And then I'll cut down to that line. Once we have those in place, then we can come in and start removing the waste. And as with most any chisel work, this is a ton of fun. I really can't explain how much fun this really is. Uh, but getting these large pieces that pop out and then getting it close to the line, it's just really enjoyable. For the first few rows, I'm keeping it bevel up and kind of planing down towards the line, but still staying all good ways away from it. Then once I get back a little ways, I flip it over bevel down because, well, the chisel can't reach all the way bevel up. And then we can go in chopping out the exact same way. It just takes a little bit more skill to do it. And this is a great thing to learn because being able to use the chisel bevel down gives you far more versatility in how it's used and the, the, w the areas that you can get into. So get used to working with bevel down and you'll be happy. Now you can see it's a very rough surface. We need to smooth this out. You could spend the time and go at it with a chisel and that's a good way to learn chisel skills. But I ain't got no time for that. So I'm going to pull out the plane and go to town on it. The plane does pretty much everything except for right up against the hook itself. And for that, I'm going to bring in the chisel and clean out most of it down close to that line. And then once most of the work is done, I can bring in a shoulder plane and get up really nice tight to that corner. The shoulder plane I have is about three quarter inch wide. So I'm just going to be doing right up against the shoulder. And that gives me a place that I can then bring in the regular plane and continue working across it. That gives it a space for the side wall of the plane to fit in up against the, the edge of the hook. Then we can flip the whole thing over and do it again. A second verse, same as the first. And it ought to get better, but it's really going to be a lot more fun. <laughs> Keep on going and you'll be able to clean it out. And this is a, a good way you, any of the skills that you learned on one side, you can then continue on to the other side. Keep on going until you are down to your cut lines and everything is happy. After that, we can start smoothing it out and getting everything prepared for the final steps on this. And so I'm gonna be going over all the surfaces and smoothing them out, being very careful of grain direction. I'm, I'm basically doing a final pass on both of the sides and both of the ends. Um, particularly on the end grain, it can be very difficult. And this is one of the, the places where I do like having a low angle plane. I don't use it as much, um, but in this case, the end grain is, that's where a low angle plane is at home. It's not necessary, but you'll be surprised how much easier it actually is. And the shavings from a low angle plane on end grain are just incredibly gorgeous. Um, really, really beautiful and a very happy time. <laughs> Once we get all the sides cleaned up and ready to go, then we can work on a little bit of the chamfering and some of the final details you need. Um, on the tops of the hook, it can be a little more difficult because it's all cross grain. Uh, so you just need to make sure you're taking a very thin cut and you'll be surprised at how smooth you can actually get it to be. 
Once we have that done, it's ready to start preparing for cutting this in half. We want to make two hooks out of one. And so I'm going to be finding center of the board, how wide it is. In my case, it's about uh, what, six, seven inches wide. And so I marked it out with a marking gauge, found out exactly where the center was, and then drew a line all the way around across the center. This gave me something to follow with the saw. And here I'm going to actually use my uh, Japanese saw. Um, I just always try to pull it out whenever I can to improve my skill on it. It's not something I like to use that much, but I do like to keep the skill as much as possible. And this also is a good place to use it because you can cut a lot and not run into the back of a, saw, in the back, of a uh, back saw, and you don't have to worry about using a big handsaw. The problem is when you flip it over to cut it back off, uh, you need to be careful not pinching the board together, so I put a wedge down at the bottom of the slit. So when I cut it, it uh, didn't pinch the blade. And there you have two hooks. We're going to do the same thing that we did just a little bit ago with smoothing off the surface where we had all the saw marks. Get those all nice and clean, and then chamfer the edges that we saw before. And that's pretty much it. They're a really simple task, and you can see them done with a whole bunch of different designs and shapes. And everyone's going to have their own design and shape that they want for it. I kind of like this with the tall hook in the back. Um, some people really don't like that. Some people like to have a, a, a longer hook so that it has more material because it's just a, a cross-grain connection. But uh, I, I like it like this. I like to have the thinner hook on there. I'm going to finish it off with BLO paste wax, and it's done. Why do I use BLO and paste wax? It's not a great protective finish, but it is one that's easily renewable, and for a hand tool that's going to get beat up in the shop, it is a perfect finish for that because at any time I can just grab a little more BLO, throw it on there, and we're good to go. Wipe it off, apply some beeswax, paste wax that I've made, and we are happy. I, I'm, I, I really like how these came out. They're simple, they're sweet, it's a great project and a great thing for a beginner to really sink their, their, their claws into working with wood grain and the way things cut. It's a, a fun first project. So I hope you like this, and uh, yeah, I'm happy. Oh, the video's still going? So there you have it, two bench hooks ready for the job, and now we can put them to use and have a little bit of fun in the shop. This is a fun project for when you want to experiment and learn new things. Uh, I, I just like this one for a beginner. It, it's a great way to learn how to use a chisel, how to work across the grain, how to work in a corner. Um, simple project, but a lot that goes into them. So I hope you have a little bit of fun with the project. If you want to see even more detail than this video, I'll leave a link to Roy Underhill's video where he has like a 25 minute long video going into depth on how he makes them in his style of bench hook. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down below. I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. If you go fishing with a bench hook, do you get to catch basswood? <laughs>